Thanks for tuning into this free AppSheet course. To get access to helpful tools and other courses like this, visit us at appsheettraining.com. Hello there, my name is Justin from appsheettraining.com and welcome to our beginner task tracker build series. If you're new to AppSheet, this is a great place to start. This is a build series where we go from start to finish through an application development. We will not be explaining every concept or feature in depth. However, if that's more of what you're looking for, we have more topic deep dive content on our website. Throughout this series, you will learn how to effectively structure your data in a Google Sheet and how to connect that data to AppSheet. Then we will walk through using that data to create a pleasing user experience by using some of the different features of views, format rules, and actions. Lastly, we'll cap off the build by walking through the creation of a simple bot from the automation tab to complete a task within our app. By the end of this series, you should be ready to create your own simple apps in AppSheet. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the first section of our beginner task tracker build series. AppSheet apps are data-driven, meaning that the content users will see and interact with is connected to a spreadsheet or database. In this section, we are going to be demonstrating how to effectively structure our data in Google Sheets, and then how to connect it to AppSheet and make it interactive. So to get started, we're going to be opening up a new Google Sheet. And in that Google Sheet, across the first row, we're going to put in our header columns. So we're going to start with ID in the first one. Then we're going to move on to task name. And then we're going to put in due date, status, and notes. So the first row of your table is always going to be your column headers. And this is important in AppSheet because we're going to be putting in our information in the second row down. And these column headers allow us to know what information is in each column. So if I come to this column, I know it's going to be the ID. Come to this column, I know it's going to be the task name. And AppSheet also knows that this is going to be our task name column meaning that if we ever want to call the task name of let's say our third row of data, I have to call the task name column and AppSheet will know I am talking about this column. So that also means that we need to keep these column headers different names because if I have two that are the same name, like let's say I just had date here and I had date here and I want to call date in AppSheet, it wouldn't know which column I'm talking about. So our information might be completely different right here. And to us, we can tell that one date's different than the other. But to AppSheet, it doesn't know because they're both called date. And so in AppSheet, it'll sometimes call this uh, piece of information. And other times, it would call this piece of information. And so to help ourselves out and help AppSheet out, we are going to make sure that our column headers are all different. All right, so now that we have our header columns, I actually want to talk about two very important ones, being this ID header and this task name column header. So in AppSheet, there's something called a key ID. And this is important because it is how AppSheet differentiates each row of data from another row of data. And I have a row of data for this app. It's right here. You see this, and you don't understand what it means or how to read it. And that's perfectly fine, because it's only for AppSheet. This is how AppSheet differentiates each row. Because if I added another row of calling it making dinner for a task name, AppSheet can't tell the difference between these two. And so this one's ID, let's just say it's ABC123, these two are different which allows AppSheet to know that this making dinner and everything that goes along with it is different than this making dinner. And so this is just for AppSheet to know. The best way to describe that is kind of like a social security number, where even though these two have the same name, they have different social security numbers or key ID numbers, which allows AppSheet to tell them apart. And so that brings me to the task name. This task name is something that we will call a label. 
and that allows us to differentiate between um, the different rows because this means nothing to us we will want to use a task name as a label, meaning whenever we're calling something in app sheet, we're referencing it as this make dinner. And we can tell the difference. So let's say this one, we want to make dinner on the 18th of 2021. And so if I see this, I will recognize that these two make dinners are different because they're on two different days. Whereas with AppSheet, they'll recognize that it's different because these IDs are different. So you can think of key ID is for AppSheet in order to differentiate between the rows, whereas task name or labels is for us as the users to figure out what row and what item we are talking about. All right, so now that we've finished talking about and setting up our Google Sheet, we're gonna go ahead and head over to appsheet.com and sign in, go to the My Apps side, and now we will see this quick start. And so I'm going to click Make a New App, and here they give us some options, but we just set up our own data. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Start with your own data. And it wants me to choose an app name, and this is going to be my Task Tracker app. What category? Uh, mainly for myself, so I'll call it Personal or Fun. I get to choose my data and here there's some different sources you can use um, Google database such as Google Sheets or you can use SQL um, we're gonna go ahead and just stick with Google and it's gonna open this up for us and come down to my intro to app sheet build which is where I have this at and we're going to go to my task tracker app now AppSheet is taking our data, um, it's reading through it, and it's actually going to create an app for us. Now the app is not that great. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we need to change to make it a better user experience, but look at that. It already has making dinner and it's marked it as completed. So I haven't even touched anything in AppSheet and it's already started to form an app for us. But to get started, we're gonna go over to the data on the left side. We're gonna be using this a lot to go in between the different features of AppSheet. And here in the data, we have this table called Task Tracker App. And this, if I click to view source, it actually takes me right back over to the Google Sheet that we had just set up because that is the data, like this is the source of the data that it's pulling. So get out of one of those and come back over here and here in this data I recognize that it's using the correct table that I want it to use by using the view source I saw that the table name is task tracker app which is from this table now if you added another sheet you would have another table and so you'd call it something different and so whenever you come back into new table you can add that different table and have it be called a different name. But for us, this is all we need. This is great. We can now see if we're allowed to update, add, or delete anything from this table. Meaning that if I update something in the app, so I come into the app, and let's see if I can show you this, yes. So we come in here, and instead of make dinner, put make dinners, or I change the due date, this is allowing me to update this. Or I can add, meaning I can come into the app, I click down here and I'm able to add a new um, item to our data table or I can delete it. So if I come in here and I don't want this there anymore, I'm able to delete it. So if I go through and let's say I turn this off, whenever I click in here, I can no longer delete it. Um, you can even changing the add to where no one can add anymore and you can change updates so that no one can edit but in that case it just goes to read only so if you want someone to have an app where they're not able to interact with a specific table like you just want the table to show them the information then you would just click read only but for our purposes we want all three of these to be checked and go ahead and save so saves the changes to our app now it's syncing.
So in this video, that's actually all we need to interact with here in the data tables. If you are looking to know more about the storage or security or scale or localization on here, we have more content that goes deeper into those different parts of AppSheet. But for now, in our purposes, we are actually going to move over to the Columns tab. So here in the Columns tab, we have our Task Tracker app, and this is linked back to our table of Task Tracker app. Another way you can get there is even by just clicking the View Columns button right here, and it actually opens it up for us. So we can see here in the Name column, we see the row number, ID, task name, due date, status, and notes which should look familiar because it's actually the exact same column headers that we put into our data at the very beginning. This is what I meant by AppSheet will use this first row as our column headers. So this row is linked with this. And this is how we are going to identify each of the different pieces of data within each column. And so here, there's a few things that I want to pay close attention to. If you remember, whenever I was talking about key ID, this is the column that shows us which one is our key ID for each row. And right now, we have that as ID, which is exactly what we want, and it's a type of text. Then, if we look right here, we have label, and this label actually goes with our task name, and it's type name. So the difference between name and text is if it's a name, AppSheet is more likely to put it as a label. That's the main difference between text and name. And we want task name to be our label because our label is how us as humans, as the users, are able to differentiate between the rows of data. Moving on from there, we're gonna check our due date and its type is date. And this is exactly how we want it. The date type is month, day, year in AppSheet. There's another uh, data type called date time, and this is month, date, year, and then the time as well being hour, minute, seconds. But there's a way to turn off the seconds. And then if we come down here, there's even a time data type, which is just the hour, minute, seconds, or you can turn off the seconds as well. But for us, because it's due date, we want to keep it as a type date. Now for our status, this is where it's gonna get a little different. Instead of text, we actually want to call it something different, being enum. And when enum is, or at least a good way to think about it, is if we want buttons in our app where you have to choose between a specific set of choices, we want it to be an enum. And so here I clicked on, let me show that again. I clicked right here on this pen so that I can edit this row um, from here. So the other screen was a quick edit screen. And now we have our full edit screen. I'm gonna come down to values, click add. And this first one, I want it to be incomplete. And our second value is going to be completed. So what this means is that in my app, whenever I go to input the data type for status, I have to choose between incomplete or completed. So I'm going to click done. And then the notes here is text. I'm actually going to change this to long text just in case someone has a very long set of notes. So this long text AppSheet recognizes that you might be putting in a paragraph or two into the text box as opposed to text, which is just represented for a short little bit of text. Now, moving on from there, these formulas are different ways that we can essentially assign the value for our data in the column but we are not going to be getting into that in this video. So if you want to know more about the formula tab, once again, please check out some of our other stuff over at appsheettraining.com. So continuing on, we have the show column. And this column, I will show you what it does, but it allows us if we are going to be able to see the different columns in the different views that AppSheet has. So specifically, this one is a form view. 
And here, as you can see, we have the ID, task name, due date, status, and notes. But there's no row number on our form, and that's because the show is actually unchecked, meaning that we don't want that row number to be seen on any of our views on AppSheet. And we also don't want this ID column to be seen by anyone in AppSheet because once again, this is only for AppSheet, so it's not for us. So I'm going to go ahead and check or uncheck the show box for ID, and that actually gets rid of it from this view and every other view as we continue on through this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Now you're gonna see this little warning that just says our column name ID is now unsearchable because it is hidden, and that's fine because we don't want people searching for the ID from the specific ID anyway. So we'll just leave that warning as it is and it won't actually hurt our app at all. Moving on, we have editable. And this just means that can a person come into the app and edit these specific fields? And the answer is going to be yes. We are okay with people being able to edit any of these even after they have been completed. So that's a way where if you remember on our tables, we have this updates. If you want them to be able to update everything except for, let's say except for one column, like let's say the due date, we don't want them to edit that, um, then you can uncheck the editable right here and they won't be able to edit that. But we want our people to be able to edit everything on this app, so we're gonna continue on. Now the require means that they cannot complete this form unless they have filled in this data. So the first one that's required is the ID, which thankfully AppSheet fills in automatically for us. And I'll show you why AppSheet does that in a second. So we're gonna leave that checked as it is. But now I notice that task name, you can also tell what's required by these little stars right here. And I notice that task name doesn't say it's required, but for me, I would want to know the task 100% of the time. So I'm actually going to check that that is required. And I also want to know if the status is incomplete or completed. So the task name, due date, status are all going to be required on our app for this form. But if you don't have notes about the specific task, then I don't want to force someone to put something in there. So I'm actually gonna leave this unchecked. And once again, we're gonna go ahead and save it. Now, coming back, we just talked about the require. And so now the initial value, this is how AppSheet puts in that ID every time. This initial value of unique ID is the value that this column is always gonna start with, but we can always change. So unique ID, we always want our ID column for our key ID to start as the initial value of unique ID. So we want to leave that there. And if I come down, I actually don't care for the task name to have a starting value because I won't always know what task I want to be putting in until I'm going to enter it. So we'll leave that blank. If we come down here, this today is for our due date. And this is just saying that it's always gonna start as today, which is helpful because if we come to this calendar view, it's always gonna start in the mark or in the month that we are in <laughs> being March as of right now. So if I know I'm gonna have something possibly coming up in that month, this is actually very helpful because it is always a firm starting point of where you are that day so that you can move around from March to April, let's say, or um, I guess you could go back, but that kind of defeats some of the purpose. So <laughs> you'll usually want to go forward when you're tracking your tasks. So we'll just leave it as 18th. Come over here to status. I actually don't care for it to have an initial value, um, partly because clicking buttons is fun. Um, and so we're actually just gonna leave that blank as well as the notes, because once again, people might not put in notes. Moving on from there, we have display name. 
And this you can think of as essentially where this task name is right here. I could come in and have it say something different right here if I wanted to, but I don't. So I'm just gonna leave this blank um, because I set it up the table, or I guess we set up our tables to say task name and due date and status and notes how we wanted them to. So we can leave this blank. And the rest we will actually leave for other videos because we don't want to get into all any of this in our app currently. Um, so if you want to or need to know more about that, once again, please check us out. All right, so that actually concludes our first part of this intro build where we went in, we set up our data in our Google Sheet. We talked about what our column headers were as well as why they are important, as well as why it's important to make sure that they're all different. We went through what is an ID column, our key ID right here, as well as going through over the label, or in this case, our task name, and why that column is also extra important. Then we went through our data to check for our tables and then viewed the columns and got to talk about our different types, um, why the names, once again, are important, the key, the label, how you can choose between these, but make sure there's only one, as well as what some of our functions here in the columns table um, can help us do and how they manipulate our app interface already. So now that we have our data set up, we are able to go in and really start making this app a great user experience for ourselves and for others. So I hope this has been helpful and thank you so much for watching. Hello and welcome to section two of our beginner task tracker build series. A clean and intuitive visual interface is key for driving productivity in your apps. So in this section, we are going to be using a variety of features to create a pleasing user experience for our app. All right, so in our last video, we finished setting up the data for our app. And so in this video, we are going to be using that data to create a good user experience and changing up the way our app looks right over here. And if you already noticed, I have more data entries in here. And that's because on my Google Sheet, I added these three rows in. But you can also do that on the app by clicking this plus button and going ahead and filling out some more forms. And that'll automatically add it to your Google Sheet. So go ahead, take a second, add that data so that your app is caught up. All right, now that we have all that data added in, we are going to come over here to the UX on this left side, and we're gonna stay in the Views tab. And here in our Views tab, right here, the first one that pops up is this Task Tracker app, and this is our view. Now, there's a way that we can make sure that this view is the same as the view that we're looking at. And so, right here, whenever I see I'm on this view, I come down, Right here it says view and it says task tracker app right here. So I can use this to double check that I'm on the correct uh, view, my primary views for what I want to manipulate on my app. Another cool thing about this feature is that actually if I was back over here in my data table area, I could just click on this and it automatically bring me straight to the UX views in this task tracker app view. Now looking at this view, I can see it going down the list, it says view name. So this is the name that is displayed up here, as well as the name being displayed right here. But we can change that later. But for now, we're gonna leave it like this because it actually matches the table that we're getting this data from, which brings me to this next point. And it says for this data, so which table or slice is it displaying? And right now we only have one table that's our task tracker app. So we're just gonna leave that there as it is. Next we have view type. So what kind of view is this? And right here it says this is a card view. So this right here is what our card view looks like with this data currently. But there are many different views to choose from and I encourage you to go through and try out the different views and see just how they look and what goes on with your app whenever you choose them. 
But for this video, we are going to stick with the deck view and we can see that our app has already changed and already looks a little bit different. Continuing on our position right here, it says center. So this is actually talking about this right here. Where do you want this button to be along the bottom of your app for the user? It's right now it's just center. That's the default. I'm gonna click left because I want it to be the leftmost button on our app as we go through forward and add another view to our app. Continuing down, our view options starts off by saying sort by. And so this is how we're gonna actually differentiate as we go down our rows, how is it sorted? So right now it's sorted by task name, meaning that this go to grocery store, the reason it's above test is because it starts with a G and not a T. And while alphabetical sorting is very helpful for many different data types, our data for the app is dealing with incomplete versus completed on task tracking. And for me personally, I think task tracking would be best sorted if it was sorted by the dates. So I'm actually going to change this to due date and now it's changed and it's ascending, which means that the closer the date is to right now, the higher up it's gonna be. So that's why our 319 is above the 321. And I actually wanna keep it like that because on a task tracking app, I would want to know what is the next task that I need to complete that's coming up. Continuing down, we have group by, and this right here says group by status. And so what this means, is it's grouping by what status type it is. So these are incomplete statuses and these are completed statuses. And that's why the test and grocery store are grouped together with the incomplete status. And these two, Visit Trent and Make Dinner, are grouped together with the completed status. And we want to keep it like this so that we can tell quickly at a glance what do I have incomplete that I still need to do and what's the soonest one that's coming up where the date's the closest, meaning this due date is the closest to right now. And so we're actually gonna leave the sort by and the group by as they are right here with due date and status. Continuing down, we have our group ag aggregate and this says count or none. So what this is, is if I click none, you see how incomplete the numbers right here left but if I click count, it shows me how many uh, rows do I have that are incomplete and how many rows do I have that are completed. And so I want to keep that so that I know how many tasks I need to complete that are currently incomplete. Here we have main image. And so this would be if we wanted to insert an image of something onto um, our view, but we don't have any images and so this auto is actually the same as none So you can leave it at none or auto in this case Primary header this is going to be this right here that says test or go to grocery store That's our primary header and we're actually going to change this to task name Which is what it is. So our primary header was already task name under auto but we're gonna go ahead and make sure and specify that it's going to stay task name as we continue through our app. And the secondary header is the part right underneath it. And to make sure that we keep it as due dates, we're actually gonna change it to due date just to make sure that it stays as due date as we continue manipulating our app interface. And this will allow us to quickly at a glance see what is my task that I have to complete and when is it due by? Because we could keep notes, let's say, right underneath if you want to know what the test is over or where to grab the list to go to the grocery store. But I think in this case, it would be most helpful to keep it at due date. Plus, the due date is also how it is being sorted. And so it's just another helpful thing to see for the user. Summary column is, I'll show you, it adds whatever column we choose, in this case notes, over on the right side. So it doesn't really work with this view all the time. As you can see, they're being cut off. Sometimes this can be helpful with dates if you input it in a certain way. But for our app, we're actually gonna leave this at none 
because we don't want anything over there and I think it actually looks pretty clean with none. Right here it says nested table column and so this is going to get into a little bit more advanced app sheet and so we're actually going to leave that for another video series on appsheettraining.com. Here we have image shape and this goes back with our main image and so this has it's not going to change anything in our app. So we're just going to go ahead and skip over it. Here it says show action bar. And so what this is, is it's going to show the delete or the edit on each of our rows here in our view. And so if I hid that, you won't be able to see them and you would actually have to click on them in order to delete or to edit. Or if you leave this action bar here, it allows you to quickly delete or edit from this main view. And so we're actually going to come back to this later, um, later on in our build video. But here the actions is which actions do we include. So if I click add, it would actually only have the delete because that's the only one that I have right here. Or I could change it to where it's only edit right there. But once again, we're going to come back to these two at a later time. Here in display, this is actually going to allow us to change what this image right here is, which actually this is a great image for what we have here because it's a list of objects. But at the bottom, I don't like how it says task tracker app for talking about the view. And so for that, I want to change my display name to be just tasks. And so now I'm going to click save and it's actually going to save all the changes that we have just made. And so here right at the bottom it says task for us so that we know that this is the task view and it'll show us all our tasks whether they're incomplete or completed. This show if right here is we can actually use a formula to decide whether to display this view or not on our app but we are not going to be doing that for this app build. Come down to behavior and it's going to you can decide what actions for it to take whenever you click. So row selected, row swiped, I'll show. So if I have this on delete and I swipe to the left, you see how it pops up right there for wanting to delete it and the same thing for if I switch this to the right. But for now we're just going to leave these as auto and as they are. And then documentation is just if you want to leave a note for another developer using this app or even for yourself as to changes that you've made. But it doesn't have uh, any effect on your app. And so this it concludes our first run through of this first primary view for our task tracker app. So now we're actually going to go up to the top up here to brand and click brand and now this is how we can change uh, kind of the aesthetics of our app so it won't actually manipulate with our data but instead it will change the way that our app looks to our users so you can have a light theme or a dark theme dark theme always looks great um, but we're going to stick with the light theme for right now your primary color, you can switch that up. I'm actually going to keep it at the blue. App logo. So this app logo is going to be one, what is displayed on your home screen if you have the app downloaded, or also what is displayed right here. And so we're actually going to change that over here to this little pencil and list because it kind of looks like someone making a task list list and ready to check it off. Here our launch image. So this is the screen that is shown during syncings, which I can go ahead and click save to show you what I mean by that. So this screen right here, how it's just white. I want to change that so it adds some life to it. I click this right here, a nice blue hue. And this background image is, I will show you. So if I click this, it changes right here behind the app. We go in here, you can see it down there. And so that is one thing that you can do. I'm going to leave it at none for right now. 
we're going to go ahead and save it and you'll get to see the new launch image right there there it is kind of looks a little bit cleaner a little bit more real than just a white screen <laughs> here if we come down we have our show view name in the header and so what this does is up here it shows the name of our view so it says task at the bottom at the top and you might think that's a little redundant however if I come over here this tells me you're in the details view and so as you have an app that develops many views sometimes you can get lost if you don't have the show view name in the header helping the user know where they are in the app at any given time so we're actually going to leave this on and I I would encourage you to leave that on on most of your apps unless specifically asked not to just because it really does help with your user experience, especially as more and more views are added to your app as it grows. Then we're gonna come down this show logo and header. So this is the logo that we just chose up here. And this allows it to be seen right here. So there's not really a function other than aesthetics and it actually looks more formal and your app looks a little bit nicer with the logo in the header and so I encourage you to have on both the view name and the logo and the header for most of your apps that you make unless you just really hate seeing the logo or you're specifically asked not to have the logo in the header. Then here you can hide your menu and search buttons if you want to and so that gets away these three lines that were right here as well as the search option. Um, for this app I would like them to be seen because this menu you can come and look at this as well as the search if you need a search for something specific. So we'll leave that um, able to be viewed. And now here the style, this changes just the aesthetics of the app. And so I'm going to leave it at accented footer as opposed to colored. But really this is just visual preference for yourself as you are making these apps. So now that we've finished here with the brand view, I'm gonna go ahead and save before we move on. All right, now that we have finished with our brand, we are gonna move back over to the views tab. And we are actually going to come down to the show system views. And when we click this, it shows us all of these hidden views that AppSheet creates automatically when we create our original view. Um, and in this case, it was created when we created our app. But for every view that we make, it actually has these kind of background views, you can think of them. Because if this is the main view, I have to click on this in order to get to this task tracker app detail view. At the bottom, you can see what view you're at, which matches up with this one here. So if I click it right here, it'll take me straight to this view. All right, so now that we are in this detail view, we are actually going to be making some changes to make this UI component look much nicer to have a better user experience. So right here where it says use card layout, we're actually going to go ahead and click that, which changes up our UI, and I think makes it a little bit nicer. And coming down with the card layout, this right here was usually utilized for pictures. So the card layout is a great way to incorporate pictures into your UI for the detailed views of an app. We are not using pictures in our app, so we're actually going to skip over this component of the card layout. Coming down here to the header, we have our column here says task name, and so this header component is actually right here. It says make dinner right there, and we want to leave that task name because as our task tracking app, we want to see what task it is as soon as we hop into the detail view. Underneath that, right now it says status, but we are actually going to change this to due date. So that way we can see what am I looking at and when is it due for my task tracking app. But underneath that, we are actually going to leave this blank. I'll show you why in a second. Moving on, we have our action. Right here it says on click. Action two says edit, and so this is this right here. We don't really need this because down here we have an edit button, as well as this delete is kind of redundant because we have another delete up here. So we're gonna go ahead and just click none for that action. And then our delete is actually over here at this heart. 
And so we can click none to get rid of that. And now it's a nice clean view. This one actually has nothing on it. And so we're gonna leave it as it is. Moving off from there, we have our quick edit columns. And in this quick edit column, I'm actually going to add and make this status and you'll see why. So here, instead of it just saying what we've chosen and then in order to change it, we would have to go to the edit button and then change. We can now change it directly from this detail view, which will be very helpful for us as this task tracker app, we want the user to be able to say that they've completed something or that it's incomplete as quickly as possible and cutting out an extra button input and slight load um, will help with our user experience greatly. So we're going to leave status here in our quick edit and then right under that is our notes which is exactly where we want the notes to show up on AppSheet. Continuing down we have this sort by so you can once again sort your rows by one or more of the columns, but we're actually not going to be doing that on our app right now. Column order, we actually just ordered it because of the card layout, we're able to order our column. But if you noticed, our notes actually isn't anywhere on this card layout, and neither is status, because we have status in the quick edit columns. So here, if we wanted to move the notes above the status or vice versa, or if we had extra columns that we want to rearrange differently, we would once again use column order in order to actually manipulate underneath our card layout. This display mode, where it says automatic, normal, centered, no headings, or side by side, is talking about this status and the notes shown underneath our header. And so this is on normal where it's right above, we can click centered to have them right in the middle, or we could do side by side, or in our case, we're gonna leave it at no headings, just to make this UI a little bit cleaner looking, and intuitively, we should be able to tell what all the different components of this card are because there's not that many. Max nested rows is once again, something that we would go over in another video. And this slideshow mode allows us to be on the make dinner detail view and we can come and click this arrow here and it goes to our go to grocery store view or we can go back. And so this just allows us to bounce back and forth between them without having to go out and then click on another one to come back in. We're just able to freely move between them in this slideshow mode. Moving on to display. This display name means that we could change, instead of it saying details up here, we could have it say something more like task details. And so this, once we click save, will change it to display task details at the top. And just kind of making it, once again, more helpful for a user to know exactly where they are in the app at any given time. So we know it's not just a detail page, it's specifically our task detail page. Moving down, we have behavior, which we are actually going to leave alone. Same with documentation. And so this will conclude our first of these extra reference views within AppSheet being our detail view. So moving on from this detail view, we are actually going to begin changing our form view. So if we come back to this home page, we come to click add, we're back at our form view, and we can open that by clicking it right here in our reference views section, or once again, right under the app emulator, we can click this task tracker app form. So in our form view, we can now go through and manipulate the way our form looks by checking out the page style, which this page style is very helpful as your forms get multiple pages. Ours, however, is just this single page, so we don't need to mess with our page style because it actually comes in as simple whenever it's automatic. But if you have multiple pages, you can have a page count or you can have tabs. So the tabs would appear and you could just click between the different tabs of your form view. Next, we have our form style, and so this is essentially asking where this task name and due date are gonna show up, whether we want it the default of just above, or if we want them to show up 
next to each other side by side. We are going to leave it at default for now. Column order is once again, if we wanted our due date above task name or status above due date, we could change our column order. But because of the way we set up our data here, it's actually in the order that we want it to be. Now for our save cancel position, this is just asking where we want our cancel and our save button on the app for this view, whether we want it at the bottom or if we want it up here at the top of the form. I'm going to leave it at the bottom because I think it's just easier to hit cancel or save if it's at the bottom. Here we have max nested rows, which once again we will cover it in another video. Coming down here to auto save, so this is as soon as they finish filling out the notes button or notes in our case, once they go through and complete all of these, it'll automatically save their form for them. We are going to leave this off and just have to manually hit save. And here we have auto reopen, so we automatically reopen the form after saving, meaning once you save, the form pops back up so that they can see what they just did. We are also going to leave this off and instead it's just going to move us back to where we were before which is actually what this is. So our finish view means after we finish creating a new entry, what view are we going to end at? And so we can go back to our original view. We can go to that detail view or we can go to the assistant. We're just going to leave it at automatic. And I'll show you where our view goes. I'm going to put take out garbage and I will set that for tomorrow. It's going to be incomplete as of right now. Notes, I'll put it trash pickup comes at 11 a.m. And so now whenever I hit save, it's going to take me back to our original view, which would be this task tracker app view. But if I wanted to take it to the detail view, I could have it here. But for now, I'll just leave it automatic where, where it takes us back to this home page here. Moving on, we have our display, and this once again changes our display name. And so instead of it saying task tracker app form, I'm actually going to call it a new task form. So that once again, for our users, we'll go ahead and save that for our users to be able to tell where they are in the app at any given time or any given view. So now they know, oh, I'm entering in my new task form here. Come down to behavior, event action, in the form saved, what action do you want it to happen? We're just going to leave it at auto where it adds that event to our page. And so this is going to conclude our form view for our app. All right, so now we are going to add our own action to this app. I'm going to cancel out of this form view and come back to the main page view. We're going to come over here on the left side of our screen to behavior. Click behavior at the top. You're already at actions. And now I'm going to click new action. And so here, asking for a record of this table, we're going to leave it as task tracker table. And for the action name, I'm going to call it complete task. Because I want this action to be, whenever I'm on my home page, I want an action right here. So it just popped up right here. I want the user to be able to click it, and it automatically changes my rows status from incomplete to completed. So we're going to come down to do this. And it says data set the values of some columns in this row. And so what this is talking about is over back at our Google Sheet. If I'm on this row test, I can set the value of one of the columns for this row. So in our case, we want to change this incomplete on our status column. We want to make this completed. So I'm going to come back over to the app. So we're going to come down to set these columns. And the column that we were just talking about was status. So I'm going to change this ID to status. So now this is talking about, for this row, I want the column status. I'm going to make it 
instead of incomplete, we are going to have it be completed. So what this screen is, is this is the expression assistant where we are able to write in the low code part of app sheet being, I'm gonna save this, being now it's saying that the status for the row that I click this action on, so in this case test, how it's incomplete, if I were to click this action, it would change that status to completed. And so we are going to continue down and then we will test it out. So appearance, our display name, we can change it if we want it to be different than our action name, but I think our action name of complete task tells us exactly what we need to know. So I'm gonna leave display name blank. Here I can change the icon. So this paper plane is what is showing up right here in my app. And I want to change this to a check mark. So right here, I'm just gonna choose this check maybe the one that's a little bit thicker. And so now it, cha it has changed our action button over here to be a check. So now whenever talking about prominence, what this is talking about is how our action is going to be displayed on our app. And so here it's just in line with the row. But if I were to come to this detail view, I could display it as an overlay and it would pop up right down here but this is a little bit redundant because we have these buttons that we can change incomplete and completed as opposed to hitting this check mark down here. So I'm actually just gonna leave it as display prominently so that way it's appearing on the screen without it having to appear on our detail view. So we have display inline, which would be if we go to our detail view and I wanted to attach it to a column, like let's say notes, it would appear right here next to notes which once again, we don't need that. So we're gonna leave that display prominently. Or if it's an action that we want to run in the background of our app without the user clicking the button, but instead something else triggers it, we would leave it as do not display so that nowhere in our app would we be able to see the action because we're having it run in the background. So moving on from there, we have behavior. And this first one where it says only if this condition is true means that this action will only be available or will only display given a certain parameter. So right now it's true, so it shows up all the time. However, for ours, we don't need a complete task action on a completed task. So we're actually going to change this behavior to where it only appears if our status is incomplete. So once again, I'm going to click here and this opens up our expression assistant. And instead of true, I'm going to get rid of that. And we want to find our column where our column name is status. So right here, if I click columns, I can come down and see status and I can just come over here and say insert. And so right now this is saying our status column, but what about our status column? We want it to equal incomplete. So what this means is that if on our row, the status is equal to incomplete, then this action will appear. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And so right now it's still showing up on our completed, but that's just because we haven't saved. So now we've saved, you can see that it's only showing up when our status equals incomplete. So this test, take out garbage, go to the grocery store, because when I click on it, it's incomplete here in the status, but it's not showing up on visit Trent or make dinner because here the status is completed. So this is a handy trick, especially in our case, because we only want the action to show up on certain rows, but not every row. Next we have needs confirmation. And so what this means is that whenever I click on the action, do I have to have the user enter in a yes or no for if they want this action to go through. And in our case, because it's just changing the status from incomplete to completed, which they can change back relatively easily if it was an accidental press, we're gonna leave this needs confirmation off. And if you had the confirmation on, this is a message that you could display to the user. 
And once again, documentation we don't need to touch in this section. And so we have completed and made our first action for this app. Now that we've completed this action, we are going to clean up this UI so that there's not this delete and this edit being here as well. Instead, we just want our complete task action. So that means here on this view, I can come down to view task tracker app and click that and it'll automatically bring me to the UX views for that view. And now I'm going to come down in the view options where it says actions and the show action bar. If you remember, we talked about coming back to this and now we are going to be coming back to it. So our show action bar, we don't want the delete or the edit, but we do want our complete task action. So I actually need this to stay on, but I only want my complete task action. So if I click actions here, it pops up and you see how only the, the delete action is here. So what I can do with this is I can come down to our complete task action. And now that's the only action that displays on this page, which is great because now our UI looks much cleaner. It's a lot more professional looking as we only have the action that we really need on the front page. But if I come in here, I can still delete, I can still edit as I need to. But on this page, we just have this complete task action. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and save the app. So now while we're still on the UX tab, I'm going to come over to format rules at the top because I want to change up how this looks and make it pop a little bit more because right now it's hard to tell the difference between incomplete and completed. So I want to set it up to where if something is incomplete, this test and take out garbage. So our task name appears as red. And if it's completed, I want it to appear as green and I want it to have a line through it. So that is going to be done here in format rules. I'm going to go ahead and click new format rule. And for the name, I'm going to make this red dash incomplete. This is just for me, help me know what this format rule is doing. And I know that it's making the words red if the status is incomplete. For this data, once again, our table is going to be task tracker app. And now we have to once again, write another expression here. And so this one, for if this condition is true, we actually want it to be the exact same as our action condition where we're talking about the status is incomplete. So if I come here, once again, I can come over down here to columns and I can insert status. You can also type in, if you wanted to, our brackets and then put status in there. And it kind of helps you as you go through. So you can either do that or click the insert button down here. Now that we have status, we want it to be set equal to, and in our quotations, write incomplete. So once again, this is saying if our status column for that row is incomplete, then we want it to do something. And so we're going to click save. And so we want to choose which column gets formatted. And in this one case, we were talking about how we want test and take out garbage to change colors. So that is going to be our task name column. So I'm just going to click that and leave it as task name. Now, as we come down our visual format our icon, if you have a highlight color, let's say something like this, it'll show up, but you can change what it looks like by choosing the icon. But in our case, we don't want an icon or a highlight color. And so we're just going to move down to text color and choose that as red. So now the task name is red, so long as the status is incomplete for that row. So as you can see, none of the completeds changed red, only are incomplete as of right now. Continuing on, we have text format. So this would be if you wanted to underline or bold or even make it bigger, you can go through and you can do that. For now, in our purposes, we are going to leave it 
just as red. The workflow template format, we actually don't have to touch anything about this because this deals with images. So we have completed our first format rule, changing and complete to red, and we're going to go ahead and save those changes in our app. And while it is syncing, we are going to go ahead and click on new format rule and change the name to green completed once again so that we know what this format rule is doing and that it's going to change these words to green because their status is completed. Once again, our table task tracker app and if this condition is true, this condition is going to be very similar but slightly different to the other conditions we have written. So I'm going to open up my expression assistant. Once again, in the columns, we can grab status here and then come over equals and quotations. We need to write completed because that is our status here. Our status is completed, and so we want for every row that has a column status, our status column is completed, we want this format rule to apply to it. Once again, we are going to choose task name because we want the task name to be influenced by it. Coming down, once again, we can change our icon or highlight color, but in this case, we're going to do text color to green, which shows up as green. And then we're going to come down to text format. And I said I wanted to put a line through it as if we have completed it. And so that is going to be our strike through. So now it's green. It's crossed off. We know we've completed it. And this is going to conclude our green format rule. So we're going to go ahead and save the app to make sure all of our changes are up to date and synced with the app. So we have finished our first view. And we've changed these colors to make the incomplete or completed status pop a little bit better. So now we can really tell which task we have to complete and which task we've already finished. We've gone in and we've gotten to change up the detail view quite a bit and made it look very nice, aesthetically pleasing, as well as making it easy to choose if we've completed or have not completed. And we've also made an action, which we haven't tested out yet. So I'll go ahead and test that out real fast. So we click the action and now our test is down here and completed. If I come into the detail view, it shows that it has completed. And even if I sync the app real fast and we come over to this Google Sheet, it's changed our test to completed. So our action is working perfectly. Everything is functioning as we want it to be. Even come back in here, our form view looks good, it says new task form. And so now that we've completed this view, we're actually going to go ahead and create a new view. So this new view, we are going to start by going to data, coming up here to slices. So what a slice is, is you can think of it almost like a virtual table that pulls certain information from an actual table. So I will show you what I mean by that. So here it says slice name and underneath that it says source table. So it is pulling from one of our Google Sheets table, which in this case is just our task tracker app table from here. But we have this option to filter the condition. So that means only certain rows that meet this condition will actually be added to our new slice. And so what we're going to do with this slice is we are going to use it as the data for a view of a calendar. And in our calendar view, we only want our tasks that are incomplete to show up because we don't need to see our completed tasks that we finished on our calendar. We only need to see the tasks that we need to complete. So this slice name, I'm going to call it incomplete tasks. That lets me know that what this slice is, is all of our tasks that are incomplete. And what that means is we have to set the filter condition to where we know that the task is incomplete. And this is going to be very similar to the other ones that we have done, where we come over to our columns 
to grab our status and we are going to set our status equal to incomplete and we will click save so what this does is it's going to come through one row at a time and it's going to look here and it says this is completed so it's going to skip over that it's going to click right here and it's going to see that this status is incomplete and it's going to add it to our slice so i continue down we have visit trent as completed so it'll skip over that it'll skip over test and it'll come down to take out garbage it'll see this is incomplete and it'll grab that and pull it into our slice so our slice is made up of the rows from our original table which is the table that we chose right here but only if that row has the status equal to incomplete now here in our slice columns it's saying which columns do we want to include in this slice and for our purposes we're going to keep all of the columns in there if you have certain columns in here that you don't want on your slice you can get rid of them here but in our case we want all of the columns for every row that gets added to our slice here we have actions to include in our slice so we can conclude include any of these actions we're just going to leave it as auto for right now then once again, like our original table, we can change if the adds, deletes, or updates are allowed. And we are going to leave all of these allowed because we want our users to be on the calendar view and still be able to manipulate the data as they need to. So this concludes creating this slice. And so now we are going to use our incomplete task slice over in the UX going to go to views and we're actually going to come up here to new view so in this new view I'm going to call it calendar and I want for this data instead of task tracker app I'm actually going to come down to incomplete task and right here AppSheet is telling me that it's a slice so I'm going to click that and so now this data is only going to be if it's incomplete and so instead of a card once again we want calendar so here on our calendar you can see that nothing is showing up and you're wondering why and we will get into that as we continue down once again this position saying center I'm going to keep it at right and that's just once again where these go because if I put leftmost the calendar would be on the left or if I put rightmost, our calendar is on the right. We're going to leave the calendar on the right for now. This menu, you can even put it to where they have to open the menu to click on calendar here. But once again, I'm going to leave it on the right and continue on. So here, our view options, this is why nothing is appearing right now because there's no start date, no start time, no end date, no end time for any of our rows currently but if I come in here and I choose due date for each of these rows it is going to now display all of our information so what you could do to make this app a little bit more advanced is adding in different columns up here to be like our start date or keep due date here so we have due date start date start time end time and fill those in here on the calendar but for our purposes we are just going to keep it all as due date to populate our calendar here next we have description and this says task name so this is what is going to show up here on our calendar and we want to keep that as task name so that way we can quickly see at a glance what tasks are on there if you haven't noticed yet, we actually have tasks like this and visit Trent and test that are status completed, but they're showing up right now, even though our slice shouldn't contain those. And I believe that is just because we have not clicked save yet. So now that the app is saved and synced, it is pulling directly from our incomplete task slice and it has gotten rid of all of our rows that have a status of completed and so we are left with these two which are incomplete 
which are the ones that are from this original slice. So moving on, we have our default view. And so this is just as soon as someone opens up their calendar, they can see either the week view or the day view immediately. In our case, however, we want to leave it as month. So as soon as they see it, they can see all of the days in that month that they need to complete their task by. Down here we have display. And so this we can change our icon, which in this case we are going to, and we're going to make it a calendar. So I'm going to choose this nice calendar right here. And so this has changed our icon down here to match what we are calling it in calendar. Here we have the display name, but in this case, the display name calendar is actually perfect, so we don't need to add a display name. And once again, this show if, we can put something into our expression assistant to make the view show only if that is true, or we can leave it blank and have it show all of the time. Down here, behavior, once again, we can skip past this, as well as documentation. So now, we have already started on our calendar, but there's one thing that we accidentally skipped over, and that is this category right here. And so here it's talking about categories are shown as different colors. So if you have multiple types of data, you can click here and change it to where they all show up as different colors. In this case, however, we're gonna use it to differentiate between what day we're on and what day the task is. So that way they're not all the same blue color. Instead, they will show up here as red, which works well as it is matching our status incomplete being red. And so this is going to finish up our calendar view for now. So now that we have completed our calendar view, I'm gonna go ahead and close that right there. And if we come back down to our reference views, you actually see that we have some extra reference views here, being our incomplete task slice reference views for the detail and task form. And so what that means is if I were to come here and I click on take out garbage, it'll bring me to this details view that's different than our original details view. And so I don't like that because I want this app to feel a bit more like it's one cohesive unit, being that if I come to this details view, I want it to be the same as this details view instead of having two different detail views. And so the way we are going to do that is if I come to this task tracker app detail, I can come up here at the very top where it says copy. And I'll click copy. And now it shows up as task tracker app detail two but instead, I'm going to bring this to this data of incomplete tasks slice. And then I'm going to change this to incomplete tasks slice detail. Just changing the view name so that way I know where I'm at in the app. And so here is going to use our new incomplete task slice detail as opposed to our original incomplete task detail. So I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to come over to our calendar and we're going to click on take out the garbage and it comes up as our task detail page because we have copied and used that here instead. So now this allows our app to feel much better and that it doesn't matter which view you click on, you're going to pop up on the same details view UI. Now moving on to our form, the only thing that we really need to change about this because we didn't have to actually change anything on our original form except for the display name. Instead of it saying incomplete task form, we want to change it to say new tasks form, which will match our original, our original form view here. So I'm gonna come down here to our incomplete task slice, the form view. I'm gonna scroll down to display and change the display name to new task form. Then I'm going to click save. And 
and here it shows up as new task form from the calendar view as well as from our task view. And so this is just a way to help the app feel a little bit better for the user so that they feel like they can get to the same thing with that with it looking the same from either direction even though we know on the back end that they're technically two different views that just complete the same purpose we want it to feel a little bit more cohesive for the user as they go through way to go for getting through this video and learning how to help your app have a better user experience by learning how to manipulate the ui and change the views and even create a slice to make a new view as well as add an action to help our users complete a task in an easier fashion. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you want to check us out more, we are over at appsheettraining.com where you can learn even more in-depth skills to help you really master AppSheet. And if you want to continue with our beginner build video series, we are going to have uh, the next video where we are creating a bot to help us complete a workflow within our app. So we will see you later and have a good one. Welcome to the last section of our beginner task tracker build series. Oftentimes you will want a user's interaction to kick off an automated sequence of events. For example, you may want the app to send an email to a user each time they add a task to confirm the submission. In this instance, we want the app to automatically notify us when a task is about to become due. And in order to do that, we are going to be creating a bot with the AppSheet automation tools. So in order to create our bot, we're going to come over here to the left side where it says automation and click on automation. Now at the top, we can see that it says bots, events, processes, and tasks. And if you go through them, you can see that one, you create create a new task, for instance. But at the top up here, you can actually open a link. And this is some helpful, just helpful articles that go over like what's a task um, or what's a process or event from AppSheet. And so I encourage you to go and read through them. They're relatively short, but they can be pretty helpful. So for us, we are going to stick here at the top where it says bots, because as we create our new bot, we are actually going to be creating an event and a process and a task within this bot tab itself. So let's go ahead and create our new bot. We're going to call this bot email notification bot because the reason we're creating this bot is to send an email notification to us that our due date is tomorrow for specific tasks. Now here in our bot, we are going to choose an event. And so once I click on this, you can look through and they have some helpful suggestions for us. For ours, I'm actually going to just call it email event and so here in our email event there's two different types of events and it's either a data change or a schedule and so in a data change it deals with a table so right here our table is the task tracker app and then you can write a condition once again using our expression assistant we can create a condition so that this event will only trigger if this certain condition is met. And then even more than that, there is what type of data changes should trigger this event. Meaning, if it, is it going to be triggered on updates only or ads or ads and updates or every time you delete something, this bot runs um, or you can leave at all changes. For us, however, we want it to be on a schedule. So here in schedule, it says for each row and table. So what this means is when our schedule is triggered, let's say we have it triggered daily at 7 a.m. So if we have it triggered daily at 7 a.m., if we don't have this checked, it's only going to trigger one time for the entire table. However, we want this to trigger for every row in our table where a certain thing is true. 
So I'm going to go ahead and check this because I want it to go through our table, our task tracker app table. And in our table, as it comes down, I want it to see if the due date is tomorrow. So this is the 21st and right now it's the 19th, so it wouldn't trigger. But let's say our go to the grocery store was tomorrow, then I would want my bot to email me that go to the grocery store is coming up and it's due tomorrow. And I also want to make sure that this status is incomplete on that. But we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna come down to our filter condition. And what I want in this filter condition is for it to say that tomorrow equals my due date because I want to receive this email notification the day before. That means that my due date has to equal tomorrow. So we're gonna come down to the time tab. Now in the time tab, I'm gonna scroll down and I see this today right here. And so this today returns a date of today. So this is the data type that it returns where it just returns month, day, year, and whatever that day is, is the month, day, and year that it would return. So in this case, it would return 3-19-2021 because it's the third month, 19th day of the year 2021. So that is what our today would return. But I'm actually going to click on this, and you might not be able to click on it because I have the AppSheet Toolbox Chrome extension. And so this is very helpful as you are learning AppSheet and even as you are mastering AppSheet to just help you out while using the Expression Assistant. So I would recommend Googling AppSheet Toolbox and downloading it for free because it's pretty handy because as I click that, it actually opened up a little search bar. And so this is actually a helpful article written by AppSheet talking about this today expression. And right here I see that if I have parentheses today plus one, close parentheses, it gives tomorrow's date. Well, that's perfect because in my expression assistant, I want to write that tomorrow's date is equal to the due date. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to insert my today. And then I'm going to put parentheses around it and have a plus one inside that parentheses with it. So this is going to give tomorrow's date for any day. So as we already talked about, our event is gonna trigger daily at 7 a.m. So every day at 7 a.m. it's going to check if that day plus one is equal to to our columns we want to check our due date column so we are just going to insert due date right there so now it's going to check if today plus one meaning if tomorrow is equal to the due date for every row in our column or excuse me every row in our table so i'll show you what i mean so if i come over here what this is going to do every day at 7 a.m it's going to come to this row it's gonna look at this due date and it's gonna say, is this due date equal to my day plus one? So in this case, it would be 320. So is this one equal to 320? No, then we're gonna skip over it. Is this one equal to 320? No, then we're gonna skip over it. And continue, it'll continue on for every row. So in this case, none of these meet the requirement. So our bot actually won't run because the event never triggered. But let's say, that this one was 320, 2021. So our event would come down and it would see this due date matches the today plus one. So it's going to trigger the rest of our bot. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna see daily schedule 7 a.m. in my time zone, actually going to be central standard time because of where I live. So set your time zone accordingly. And this is it, we've set up our event, which just decides if this bot is going to run or not. So right here it says when this event occurs. 
So now that we've completed this event, we're gonna come down. When this event occurs, it's going to run this process. So we're gonna click add a step, and we've just created this process called new process. And if I come down here, I can see where it says check if status is completed. So AppSheet reads our data and guesses what we wanna use it for. And in this case, it's guessed very, very close to what we want. So I do want to check if the status is something, but I actually want to check if the status is incomplete as opposed to completed. But for now, we can go ahead and click this, and it's just set up most of what we wanted from this task. And so this task says, or this step, excuse me, says it's a branch on a condition, meaning if the condition is true, this condition right here, a condition to check, if this is true, then we can add a task for it to run, or if it's false, we can add a task for it to run. So we could keep it like this, where it says check if status is completed, but our bot, we want to run if our status is incomplete. Because I don't care to receive an email notification if my status is already completed. So if I completed it early, I still don't wanna be reminded that it's due even though I've already finished it. So in our bot right here, we actually wanna check if the status is incomplete. So I'm gonna change this to incomplete. And then I'm going to come back down here and click on this little flask right there. And instead of saying status equals completed, we're going to change it to incomplete status equals incomplete and we're just going to save that right there and now we're going to continue down so what we have so far is email event and this event only triggers if tomorrow equals the due date and now we have it to where it'll check if our status equals incomplete so if our status is incomplete then we're going to come down to this next step name and let's see close, but I didn't see what I want. So I'm going to put email. Yes, here it is. Send an email to the app user. We will click that. And so here it's just created this step for us where it says run a task. And then it says, what task do you want to run? Task tracker app, send an email to the user. And the task category is send an email. And so if we continue down system default, we'll just leave that like that. And then it says two, and then there's this phrase right here, user email. So whenever you log into AppSheet, you have to log in through an email. And so what this expression does is it takes that email and it saves it as user email. And so now it's essentially copy pasting the email that you use for AppSheet as the email to send this email to. So we're gonna come down and instead of say use default content, I'm gonna change it because I want a specific message to myself as I use this. So my email subject, I'm gonna put reminder. And in the body, I'm going to put you have, and then I wanna put the name of the task coming up. And so the way you can do that in the email body is you put two less thans and two greater thans. And inside the less thans and the greater thans is actually where you can put a column name or you can use, think of it as whenever we open up the expression assistant and we write like our code for AppSheet, we can have that code written here in between the two less thans and the two greater thans. So in my case, I want to put in the column of task name. So this column right here, meaning if the due date is tomorrow and the status is incomplete in my email, I want that task name to be sent in my email. So it's gonna say go to grocery store. But in order to do that, to call any column, we need to put our brackets and then inside, we're going to put task name. So you have 
task name coming up tomorrow. So this email will now send saying you have, and let's say once again, for example, go to grocery store. So it'll say you have go to grocery store coming up tomorrow in my email to myself. And now there's a lot other options for email, but we are not going to be using any of them. So we're actually gonna keep it just like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save. So now that we've saved, I'm actually gonna go back through all of our components for our bot. As I said, the bot will create everything else for us or will create everything while creating the bot is a better way to put it. So coming into our event, email event, I want a schedule because I want it to run every day for every row in the table, our table task tracker app, and our filter condition being today plus one, meaning tomorrow is equal to our column due date for that row. Schedule daily, 7 a.m. in my time zone. Yep, that's exactly what I want from my event. So I'm gonna move on to my process. Here it says new process in our task tracker app. If I come down, check if status is incomplete. And so our condition here is our status column for that row equal to incomplete. And if it is true, then it will send an email to the app user. If it's false, nothing will trigger. And then we have our send an email to the app user where it says send an email to the app user and we run a task. And that task is task tracker app send an email to the user. So here our task category is send an email. Continuing down, we have our user email. So this is the person we're sending it to being the person using the app. As we continue down, it says reminder for our subject. And then in our email body, we have you have, and then the information in our column task name for that row coming up tomorrow. So that's great. This process looks perfect onto our task. And this is the task that we've just looked at, but in a little bit better view. So if you want to change something specific in your bot and um, kind of a easier to look at view than necessarily messing with it over here, this is a great thing to do to click through these different events, processes, and tasks in order to find and better tune what you are wanting it to do. Well, I hope this video series has been helpful in getting you started with AppSheet. If you want to go deeper into all these different topics that we've discussed, and especially the topics that we didn't have a chance to go over during this app build, please check us out on appsheettraining.com. Thanks for watching.